In this video, we will talk about determinants. So first, the definition is this thing. I know it might not be the most approachable definition, so let's unravel it piece by piece. It's not that bad. First of all, determinants are about square matrices, so n by n matrices. It doesn't really make sense if you talk about determinants of matrices that aren't square, like a 3 by 7 or something. So only 2 by 2s, 3 by 3s, etc. So first, the determinant of a 2 by 2 is just that you multiply across, so a times d minus b times c. And that's it. Next, the determinant of a 3 by 3. We use a technique called cofactor expansion. So first, we need something called the characteristic matrix. So start with a plus sign on the left-hand corner, and then just make a checkerboard pattern of pluses and minus signs. And now, we can fix any row or any column. So you pick your favorite column or your favorite row. There is going to be smarter choices, but we'll uh, see that later. So let's pick the first column. Then you go down the columns. So you first consider this first row. Then at the intersection, you have this number, 1. And so the determinant is computed by 1 times the determinant of this submatrix, right, where you get rid of this column and this row. So you would first compute this. You take out the next row, so where the column and the row intersect. It's 2, uh, but 2 is at the minus position in the characteristic matrix. So you would do minus 2 times the determinant of the submatrix, which is this matrix. So you take out the column and the row, and you have 5, 0, negative 2, 0. So you would compute that determinant. And then finally, we go down to our last row. At this point, it's a plus sign. So it's plus 0 times the determinant of this submatrix, 5, 0, 4, negative 1. Although we're multiplying by 0, so it doesn't really matter what that matrix was. But if it wasn't 0, then it does matter. And so let's compute these out. So this will be 1 times 0 minus 2 minus 2 times 0 minus 0. 0 plus 0 times uh, negative 5 minus 0. So this is just negative 2, and that's the determinant. So as you can see, the more zeros you have on the column or row that you pick, the better. So let's compute this in another way. This time, let's fix this row. What's nice is that when we take out this column, so you have a 0 times this, the determinant of this submatrix, well, it's 0 times some number, so that doesn't really matter. Also, this one won't really matter because it's 0 times the submatrix. So the only one that matters is if we fix this column, then you'd have a minus 2, but it's at the negative position in your characteristic matrix. So it would be minus, minus 2 times the determinant of uh, 1, 0, 2, negative 1. So you take out this row, take out this column. What you have left over is a 2 by 2 matrix. And now we compute this determinant. So this will be 2 times negative 1 minus 0. And so this will be minus 2. So it doesn't matter which column or row magically using cofactor expansions gives you the same number. OK, so what if your matrix doesn't have lots of zeros in the columns or rows? Well, to fix that situation, we first need to know a couple of properties of determinants. Uh, the most important one is that if a and b are n by n matrices, the determinant of a times b is equal to the determinant of a times the determinant of b. Why is this important? Well, recall that something like, let's say, negative 3 times the first row and add it into the second row can be described using matrix multiplication of elementary matrices. That is, this elementary matrix corresponding to minus 3 times the first row and adding it into the second row. This elementary matrix times this matrix gives you this matrix, which is the output of doing this row operation. But the novelty of this is that the determinant is easy to compute for this one, and the determinant of elementary matrices are very simple. So the idea is we do a row operation to make the matrix easier to compute the determinant of by getting more zeros. So then for this one, I mean, it's a 2 by 2, so it's actually kind of easy to find the determinant regardless, this will just be negative 2. This determinant splits as the product of the determinants of each of them. The determinant of this elementary matrix is 1, because 1 minus 0. But actually, it's always going to be 1 for this type, where you add a multiple of row into another row. That determinant is always 1. And then you have just the determinant of your original matrix, uh, which you can actually just compute the determinant of the easier one. I mean, again, for the 2 by 2, it's very easy. This is just 4 minus 6. But let's say you had a larger matrix, and computing the 3 by 3 was too much. Well, you can maybe row reduce it into a nicer form so that it's easier to compute. So let's quickly verify 
what the determinants of the elementary matrices are going to be. Well, for this type where you add a multiple, let's say k times the first row into the third, if you do cofactor expansion, let's fix the row with uh, just one here, then we would only have to take out this column because every other column will be multiplying by zero, but then you just have one times one. So this is one. The determinant of the elementary matrix corresponding to interchanging a row is going to be, you do cofactor expansion. So if we fix this row, we only need to take out this column. So it's going to be one times the determinant of this sub matrix, which is zero minus one. So interchanging a row is negative one. And uh, if we want to scale a matrix by a non-zero number R, you can do cofactor expansion. Or another little fact is if you have a diagonal matrix, then your determinant is just a product of the diagonal. So this is R times one times one. So it's R. So as long as you keep track of the row operations, then computing the determinant of a larger matrix becomes a little easier. Suppose we want to compute this determinant of a four by four matrix. Then if you were to use cofactor expansion, you would fix a column or a row. It doesn't really matter which one, but even if you do, the sub matrices that you would get would be a three by three. So then you would have to compute the determinant of a three by three, which would take a lot of time. And that's not the only ones, you would have to do it four times. So instead of that, let's row reduce first to simplify the matrix. So the first thing we can do is divide this by two so that this will become this matrix. We'll keep track of the important row operations that we do. Now we can get these to be zero, but whenever we add a multiple of a row into another one, it does not affect the determinant. You just multiply by one. So we don't really need to keep track of those. We get those for free. So when we do that, our matrix becomes something like this. We can get rid of this number. Again, adding a multiple of a row into another does not affect the determinant. So when we do that, we get something like this. Let's divide this by two. So when we divide by two, this will become negative three one. And then we add negative one times this row into this one so that we get this upper triangular matrix. Now the determinant of an upper triangular matrix is also very straightforward. If you keep doing cofactor expansions, you'll see that it's just the product of the diagonal entries. So the original determinant, let's call the original matrix A, the determinant of A will be one times three times negative three times one, except we also did these operations. So if we divided by two, we have to make sure to multiply back by two, so times two times two. And so this will be six times negative six, negative 36. It would be a nice exercise in cofactor expansion if you just try the cofactor expansion without doing row operations. It'd be a good exercise, but it's not really the recommended way to take determinants. So what is the determinant determining? Well, for a square matrix, the columns are linearly dependent if you row reduce and you get a row of all zeros. But if you have a row of all zeros, then the determinant is zero. So then the matrix will be not invertible and vice versa, that a matrix is invertible if your determinant is not zero because then when you row reduce, you'll get it into echelon form where the diagonals will be non-zero. So one thing that the determinant determines is whether A is invertible or not. And if the determinant of A is non-zero, then you can say that A is invertible.